Hello everybody, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Um, things are a little bit different, a little bit different environment. It's the evening time. We are still dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane and Tropical Storm Barrel. Um, I always tell people while a lot of the danger lurks in the, af uh, in the actual storm, uh, a lot of the challenges come in the aftermath, lack of resources. Uh, it took me, after the storm went through, so Monday afternoon, Tuesday, and not until roughly three o'clock this, um, this afternoon to just get gas. So limited mobility, the inability to get around so much more, had a relative who had a tree branch fall after the storm and hit them in the head. Fortunately, they are okay. Uh, recovering at home, did have to go to the hospital. Another one had a tree fall on their car, another one a tree on their house, but uh, everybody is okay and alive and well, but still dealing with that. Uh, I'm sitting here, uh, the cigar lounge is still closed, no power. So I'm sitting here at the house doing my unwind ritual here for the, what, third straight day. No big deal, I'm used to chilling and being within myself. I need the time to think. Uh, I miss the banter with the guys, but we'll definitely connect back again. I'm here to talk to you this morning. Well, this afternoon, I'm so used to doing all of my videos in the AM uh, when I'm fresh, my mind is clear. Um, and I reserve this time of the day to really recharge and unwind, but I needed to talk about this. Uh, in case you guys haven't heard, uh, Stephen A. Smith went on the record uh, on uh, national television and basically denounced BET's uh, decision to uh, celebrate the life of O.J. Simpson as they always do their awards, all the people who have passed in the previous year. And one of the people they um, announced was O.J. Simpson. And we all know that there's a great racial divide and how we tend to look at and view the situation and the story behind O.J. Simpson. Um, he came out and he was very vocal about it. He denounced it. He had to say what he said about all these things about OJ. I'll be honest with you from a personal perspective. I'm not a fan of OJ because OJ really wasn't, um, about what I'm about. OJ proclaimed that he wasn't black, that he was OJ and OJ had a preference and it wasn't really sisters, even though his first wife was black. Um, but this isn't what this is about. This is about the racial divide and playing to a crowd. I've talked to, I've talked about this with Jason Whitlock, with Steve Harvey and a number of other people who have grown in popularity amongst non-blacks and they know where their bread is buttered. Uh, what's interesting is Faison Love, who I don't know personally, and Willie D, who I literally grew up with. Uh, we went to high school together, literally caught the 77 Liberty and the, the 30 Clinton and the 77 Liberty to Forest Brook every day. He graduated a year before me. Uh, so I can speak on who he is. While we don't always agree, uh, he's a critical thinker. He's well read for more knowledgeable than the average person might be aware of. Um, we tend to look at entertainers as solely their persona in the entertainment field. I knew him um, as a person. I watched him go through some things, losing his mom as a teenager. Uh, but just this guy is a lot sharper than people might give him credit for. I think people are starting to see that with, with his podcast. Uh, he's also a close friend of my brother-in-law, uh, who's also uh, someone who is no, known, but uh, he's also the cousin of one of my classmates. So there's this connectivity, and I know the guy. Uh, he called Stephen a 
uh, a company guy. And what he meant by that is that you're hired by a corporate entity that does not uh, consider the interests of the black collective. Stephen A. has made a living and been paid handsomely for attempting to keep black athletes, particularly black male athletes, uh, in line. And this goes all the way back to Allen Iverson and him hounding Allen Iverson about his braids and his tattoos and his chains and how he needs to present himself and how the world sees him. And basically what he was saying to AI is that you need to fit in. You need to align with the Eurocentric idea of what is. And anybody who has followed me for any time know I don't subscribe to the Eurocentric idea of what is. Uh, while I grew up in the hood, while I have a history, uh, I'm a very well uh, educated and learned person. I have Arthur 28 books. I have written over a thousand academic articles, over 30,000 prose articles. I'm one of the most prolific authors on this planet. Uh, I don't look for credit or praise. I do the work I do because I'm passionate about it. It means something to me. But if you know me, you know, I show up into boardrooms and meetings like you see me today. Why? Because uh, my mentor, who was a non-black and understood that I didn't subscribe and was not interested in playing the corporate game, told me the only way that I would ever be taken serious is if I got the goal. He said, he who has the goal makes the rules. And what that meant was, if you are good enough at what you do, if you excel in your area of expertise and you have what they need, they, are be, they will be willing to overlook you not fitting into their box because what you have is a value. Um, I can't tell you how many times people have prejudged me by the tattoos, by the hoodie, by the cap, by the earrings, only to have to literally apologize. Not because I demanded an apology up front, but because who I am demanded respect and they had been disrespectful by making an assumption. Yet Stephen A. Smith pushes this Eurocentric idea, you know, the Eurocentric idea of what's professional, the Eurocentric idea of what's classy, the Eurocentric idea of what's acceptable, the Eurocentric idea of what's beautiful and what's handsome. And he is constantly um, assaulted and um, aggressed towards um black athletes and talked about other situations and any time that he has tottered over into the field of saying something that may be offensive to his his target audience he has been basically what's the word i'm looking for throttled and censored by his supervisors, he's well paid. I think he's on a current $12 million contract over I don't know how many years. He's well paid to do what he does. And my thing is everybody has the right, just like Jason Whitlock, they have the right to say what they wanna say. But I have the right to speak my truth and my observation of it and share it. No, I don't have the platform they have. No, I don't have the following they have. And one of the reasons that that will never be is because number one is I won't play the game. It's not that I haven't been approached. The moment that I began to get any traction and those who remember, remember there was a channel that was really taking off 20 something thousand and growing almost at a thousand a week. And YouTube found a reason to snatch it. Nothing I did, nothing, anybody knows me knows I don't do anything to violate community standards, but it was some glitch in some rule uh, with me talking about a child who had been uh, beaten by his mom in school and that I showed the mom doing it. And they, they, they didn't give me, a, I had never had a strike, had nothing. They took my channel. 
Um, and then uh, I know my channel is Shadow Band, and I know a bunch of other things. Plus, I know uh, the way I present my stuff is not sensational. I'm not sensationalizing, and I don't do a whole lot of clickbait. I don't do a whole lot of celebrity gossip. Anytime I talk about celebrities, it's because there is a learning opportunity or a teaching opportunity. But what I want to point to that um, Phase Unlove did, and again, I don't know Phase Unlove. I heard some good things and I heard some bad things. I don't know if enough about him to speak on him or his character or his capacity, but what he said was pretty much in line with what Willie D said, that Stephen A basically gets paid to speak on that. Now, uh, again, Stephen A's response was, he's not with OJ because OJ was never with us. I get that part. But you also understand that there's a racial divide right down black and white, the middle of black and white that's tied to this. And it's bigger than the acquittal. It's bigger than what was going on. And it's a representation. You you have a right to feel that way. You have a right to feel that OJ got away with murdering Nicole and Ron, no, Nicole Sim, Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. You got a right to believe that. Um, and I don't believe anybody has the right to take the life of anybody else, especially unprovoked, uh, especially when no one's life was in danger and they weren't protecting anything. Has not, This has not, that, nothing to do with it. I get it. But I know the whole story. And so it's not just about OJ to me. It's about what it stood for. It's about what happened on the day that verdict came in. It's about the same response that happened when those cops that beat Rodney King were initially acquitted before the federal government got them on civil rights violations. It's that same thing that sparked, that, uh, sparked the riots. We have to understand that there's a place in time where we hold the line. They do it all the time. It's not about, um, you know, being the bigger person. This is about sitting up and saying there are just certain things we don't do. O.J. Simpson, outside of his ego, outside of a bunch of other things, was one of the greatest running backs to ever pick up a football. Didn't give him a. It doesn't give anybody a right to take a life. Doesn't give any right one a right to be abusive. I am so anti domestic violence and intimate partner homicide. I've written on it. I've lectured on it. I literally have courses. I work with Harris County Sheriff's Department right now in dealing with that. So no, uh, I don't agree with that. But what I can tell you is, if we're talking about accolades, uh, there are a lot of other people who don't look like us that have histories as equally horrible as OJ that still get what they have accomplished, acknowledged. And the man died. He can't, he can't pay any more for anything he did or did not do. Um, in fact, you know, he did nine years for stealing his own stuff. So, he didn't come out unscathed at all. Again, a lot of this goes to his ego and who he thinks he is. And, you know, that all comes and you deal with that. But my thing is, my thing is, I applaud what Willie D did and Faze on Love did in the sense of coming out against a person who obviously has more resources, um, has more at their disposal, and simply calls a spade a spade. I have been calling Stephen A. Smith out for years. I, again, I don't have the platform of a, even a, a, Willie, a Willie D by any stretch of the imagination. I don't have that sort of celebrity status, and I never set out to get it. What I did is I set out to bring truth to power to chronicle what I have learned in my research, to chronicle what I have studied uh, and developed in my observations and experiences and to share them with people for the hope, uh, with the hope of creating solutions to the enigmatic issues that plague our community. 
Uh, I have done that through Black Man Lead. I have done that through our recidivism program. I have done that through our mental health programs. I have done it uh, with domestic violence and intimate partner violence. Uh, our mental health um, um, programs and so much more. I will continue to do that. That's where my focus is. Uh, one one thing I've said for the 15 years that I've been on social, 14 years I've been on social media is I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here to get shares. I'm not here to go viral. I'm here to speak truth. I'm here to share what I know. I'm here to be a voice of truth to the best of my ability. Uh, so when I see something that is off, I'm going to call it a spade. Now, what you won't see me do is go after other people in the community who hold positions and influence within our community because I have a disagreement or because there may be something going on between us. It has happened. I have been mishandled by uh, a couple of people, one person in specific, uh, those who caught on to it and contacted me, you know who and what I'm talking about. Uh, but the thing is, I've watched what happens when two people who have platforms start beefing. We create more division within our community. The focus stops being about what's right and what we should be doing. And it starts being about whose side are you taking. I have no desire to start that. Thing. When you hear me go at a black man, it's because I see no value in what he brings to the table for my community. I consider him to be completely sold out to the other side, to be a tool uh, of misdirection and buffering for an, uh, an entity or a system that does not in any way consider the plight of my people and the needs of my people and the rights of my people and what my people are owed. And I have no respect for people like that because you have within your grasp a platform to where you can speak. When I think about somebody in the sports world, when I think about somebody in the sports world who, who I look at and they were able to do their job and they were able to call events and represent and talk about what they were doing as a sports analyst and still represent our people. I think about uh, Stuart Scott. Stuart was a guy that you just wanted to watch because he was us, but he was professional, but he was us. And he was us 100% of the way he loved his wife. He loved his daughters. And, you know, unfortunately, cancer took him away way too soon. But that brother, to me, is that. And I, I don't know him at all. I don't know any backstories. I can't speak on who he was outside of what I saw and what people have said about who he was. But I knew he never attacked our people. I knew he never maligned uh, black athletes. I know he didn't demand that black athletes behave in a way that makes white people comfortable. Um, and, you know, he's missed. You know, Stephen A. has been responsible for helping some other black people in media get on. But those people that he is helping, helping aren't us. Those are people that in general are making high six and seven figures uh, that may have lost their way. For everybody from um, a couple of Monica McNutt, um, who else? Um, Shannon Sharp, uh, when everything was going south with him and um, shows how much I, uh, I keep up. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, when he was uh, having his beef with, it'll come to him or it won't. Not a big deal. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But anyway, I don't know why I can't think of it. I do. It's eating in time and I'm trying to relax.
But the, here's here here's my thing on this. Normally, I'd be a lot more fired up, but at a point, at some point in time, you just start to realize that a person is who they are. I don't even talk about Steve Harvey no more. He's such a disappointment. <clears throat> and I stopped long before Steve started pissing off the average black person. I stopped messing with him when I learned about what he did to Bernie Mac. Um, and so that was that. But he proved himself to be who I've always thought he was. Um, Jason Whitlock isn't any different. Jason Whitlock. I take that back, it is different. Jason Whitlock initially came in with a very pro-black pro mindset, but he found very quickly that it wasn't any real money in it. But there's a lot of money in a black man attacking black athletes and black celebrities and putting them in their place and, and erroneously comparing them to white athletes and elevating white athletes and white talking points. Uh, it's a lot of money in it. And he's created qu quite the fan club that will ride and troll on his behalf and not even realizing that they are being played too. If you're not a part of the power uh, structure, you are a part of the propaganda manipulation. You just may be in a more beneficial sector, but you are being manipulated and used to protect the wealthy elite. At the end of the day, that's, that's what it's about. It's about protecting power, and that's controlled through wealth, and that's controlled on an extremely high level. I'm not talking millionaire status. I'm not talking simple billionaire status. I'm talking about families that are worth more than you can possibly imagine. The Fairchilds, literally fun countries, wars. I'm talking about families like that. The De Beers family, the Rockefellers, um, other people who are part of the Bilderberg group. These are people who are creating the policies and controlling the narratives and the messages through the media. We're talking about primarily six people or families that control all the information that's being put out through mainstream. And there's very little to counter these messages and it's controlling what you think, what you get upset about, what you're willing to fight over, what you believe and how you behave. And this isn't something new. Uh, I've been telling you about it. I told you to read the book Propaganda by Edward Bernays, what, 14 years ago. One of the first things I shared with you, you need to check out the book Propaganda, you need to read Brainwashed by Tom Burrell, a black man who ran the largest black-owned PR firm on the planet, who has since retired, but wrote the book to show how the media is used to uh, create an inferiority complex among blacks, to create a sense of dependency and need. We consistently seek their approbation and approval. We consistently look for them to say that what we're doing is okay. We rarely seek and uh, pursue opportunities to elevate ourselves, to op operate autonomously um, in a sense of empowerment and wealth building and conglomerate efforts in, in building. We don't collaborate. We isolate and we compete. We look for ways to insult and tear down one another. I am 100% in disagreement with Stephen A's approach. Again, not because I am a huge fan of who OJ Simpson is. I was a fan as a kid, and I mean a little kid, because OJ's prime was when I was before my teenage years. Uh, but everybody knew the name Jukes. Everybody knew he was the first person to rush for 2,000 yards in a four, and he did it in a 14 game season. Uh, that he did it on a team that was horrible. Uh, and he was that. He was the All American 
athlete guy. I mean, I don't mean that from a college all Americans, but I mean he was America's dude. He's running through airports and Hertz commercials. He's that guy. He's in all of the uh, airplane movies. I forget the name of them, but uh, he was that guy. And then that situation happened with um, um, that situation happened with uh, the murders of Nicole and Ronald and all of a sudden here we go and we're where we are uh, I, I don't condone murder uh, and that's not why I'm here why I'm here is speaking to the reason Stephen A. did what he did. There's a place to have that conversation. That wasn't it. BET is no longer black owned. It hasn't been black owned since the early parts of the 2000s when Bob Johnson sold it. It is a part of the white conglomerate. And the content that we get on BET now is so counterintuitive to black empowerment that it's laughable. Um, much of which could be observed on the uh, viewing the artists that were profiled on it. Yeah, there were some class acts on there, um, but at the end of the day, it shows where we are. It shows how we have been dumbed down. It shows so much. Uh, but at the same time, out of all that you could have chose to address from BET, you picked on the low-hanging fruit because you knew that it would boost your ratings, it would boost your st standing with your target audience. That's good PR, but the black people get, the, get to call you on it. You don't get to sit up and play both sides. And that's what he's frustrated with is because that's what Willie basically said. You're not standing with us, you're choosing to play both sides. You want to be viewed as this black power broker, but you're not really truly serving black communities. I would argue that um, when Nipsey, uh, big shout out, by the way, to Kendrick for that pop-up concert um, that was, to me, <clears throat> uh, in many ways, paying homage to the work that Nipsey had done. Uh, Nipsey was about giving back to the community. This isn't excusing the gang lifestyle. This isn't celebrating the gang lifestyle. This is sitting up and saying that he transcended it to the point where he had the respect where he could bring people who would normally be killing themselves in the same arena. And Kendrick did that. And uh, big, big props to him. But Nipsey had, at the time of his death, a net worth of, worth of $8 million. And I will tell you that Nipsey did more in the community with uh, what he had than your Diddy's, than your Dre's, definitely than your uh, Drake's, your Jigga's, these guys, multi-hundred, million dollar net worths, a couple of billion dollar net worths, and nowhere near the impact of the work that's in the community. And this needs to be understood. And so when I look at somebody like Stephen A. Smith, again, who has a net worth higher than what Nip had, not nearly the impact in the black community. You don't find him on grassroots movement. You don't find him funding things that will actually touch the lives of young black kids. Um, whatever you, he is doing, you know, to help other black people who, you know, find it rough or get cut or laid off or fired, and he gives them another opportunity. Uh, Skip Bayless, that's that's the, that clown's name, uh, that was going at it with Shannon, and he reached out and helped Shannon. Hey, man, mad props, good. But you talking about a millionaire helping a millionaire. That's not where the game is going to be fought. There's only so many of you guys there. The vast majority of my people are living at the poverty line of ba barely, barely above it. The median income for a black male is 44000 So 
we need to be working on that. What programs are you putting into place that will strengthen the ability of black men to develop skills that give them higher value, higher value in the community, in the workforce, in the marketplace? These are the things that you could talk about doing. You have the wherewithal, extremely knowledgeable guy. You, you, and that's my problem with guys like this is they're not ignorant. Jason Wooden isn't ignorant of what it takes to create a better situation for blacks. He's absolutely aware of it. It just doesn't serve him individually. It doesn't serve his interests, and he only cares about himself. Same thing with Stephen A. Smith. It looks good to sit up and say, yeah, I reached out and helped this person. I reached out and helped that person. How about you put your foot on the ground in the black community? How about you turn around and come down and look at some of the work we're doing on recidivism? Look at some of the work we're doing on uh, racial socialization of young black men, the rite of passage programs. Look at what we're doing in mental health and the programs we'll develop and the work we're doing one-on-one -on -one and in groups with black men to give them spaces so that they can talk about the things that there's no real true safe space to talk about. How about you do that instead of getting in your feelings and getting upset at what Willie D said? Um, again, and my thing is, while I know him, we haven't talked in God knows how long, um, but this isn't about me knowing him or ha uh, having any history with him. It's about somebody simply standing up and saying what a lot of people think and don't have platforms to say. The thing is, Willie's platform is large enough to where obviously it got back to Stephen A. And so he got in his feelings. My thing is, bruh, if that's who you are and that's what you want to do, do your thing. But what you have to understand is that when you take a position on something, you got to understand that that position is going to have a positive impact to the people that it benefits or the people that it aligns with. But it's also going to have a negative pushback from the people that find it disparaging. And what you're used to is the people who you normally disparage don't have voices. And so you can sit up and say what you want to say and nothing happens. Uh, you know, and I remember you saying, I haven't forgotten. I forget what it was you said, and it was definitely disparaging to the black community. And when the, the black community pushed back, your response was, you don't give a damn. I said what I said. And you somewhat say the same thing here. Again, you have a right. If you don't feel like BET should have celebrated OJ, you feel that way. But my thing is people are looking beyond the whole OJ thing and seeing what it's really about for you. It's really about being a company guy. It's really about sitting up and saying, hey, look, White people are love to hear that. White people are happy about it. My whole thing is, if you wouldn't have said anything, the vast majority of your audience wouldn't have even known that they brought OJ up. But you brought it up because, again, it's a lightning rod. And it's good for controversial ratings. And and you you want to be on the side of the argument that has your 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 particular target audience on a high. I get it. But just understand that there will be pushback. The difference is there's a growing number of black people developing platforms that have bite. And now you're going to start feeling when we don't feel what you're doing. We're going to start holding you accountable in spaces and places to where it doesn't go silent. Nobody's listening what I'm, you know, what I'm saying, and I'm good with that because that's not why I'm here. That's not my thing. But there are people out there who have these platforms uh, that will speak to it. And anybody that wants to bring me on, I'm 100% on talking about it. 
I'm not here for gossiping and just shooting slugs, but we want to talk about the impact of what it's like to have black people in high places, but not using their bully pulpit for the sake of elevating our people. I'm all for it. I can talk about what it means socially. I can talk about it, what it means socioeconomically. I can talk about what it has done historically. I can talk about it on a lot of different ways where it makes sense and it gives our people some understanding on why we can't tolerate it. But on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get off. Uh, I've spent way more time than I had planned um, to be on here. I'm gonna finish my uh, evening off and finish unwinding and relight my cigar and finish my yak. But I do thank you guys for letting me raid your evening. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. For the people who have followed me for years, for the people who are aware of the work we do, some of the programs I mentioned uh, during this process and believe in that, we definitely need your support. Uh, none of the work we do just happens. It, it, there's a cost associated with it, and we are highly underfunded. Uh, primarily, I'm funding it outside of two people who give every month. Roughly, that's $110 that comes in every month. One person gives 100 the other person gives 10 and every now and then somebody else gives, literally. And yet we still move and that comes from yours truly. Uh, uh, not complaining. I fight for my people and I do. That's why I believe I have a right to call out people like Stephen A. Smith who have so much more at their disposal and won't do anything. But we as a people are going to have to learn how to come together and unify. Um, while it would not cover all expenses if everybody who's a subscriber on this channel gave a dollar every month it would go a long way in resourcing some of the things we need especially with our children with that her adverse childhood experiences especially with our young boys in african-american adolescent and young adult male violence and dropouts and imprisonment and so many other things we really are struggling in a number of different areas and your support will go a long way in helping that. Look in the description box um, and at the top of the description box, it'll show you how you can support the work we do. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. I thank you guys so much for giving me your time. I'm out. Peace.